Hello. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, say that I'm very glad to be here. This is my first international conference. And I am a student of uh, Warsaw School of Economics. And today I want to present uh, my, some reflections about uh, the connections of language and uh, economics. So the first and main question uh, which I want to answer during this presentation is why language matters. Uh, Perhaps the Polish part of the audience know that person. Uh, this is Polish showman Robert Makłowicz. Uh, he travels uh, a lot uh, during the world, uh, around the world. Uh, he talks a lot about cuisine uh, history, and he's also a great fan of Austria. And during his programs, uh, I think that we can find what is the most important in the market. It is not only product, but it is also uh, sweet talk, and the mar real markets are full of conversations. And he shows it the best. Uh, perhaps we uh, all know how it looks like mar market in formalistic economics. Uh, it looks like, for how much is this apple? Five euro, for example. Okay, but this is not true uh, picture of real market. Uh, in the real market, consumer and producer uh, talks a lot about their life, their products, and everything. So now I want to introduce you some part of linguistics and philosophy of language. So what is language for philosophers of language like John Longshaw Austin? For him, it's a for, it is a form of action. Uh, he showed that language can have three types of utterances. Locution act, which is saying something in meaning of saying. Uh, for example, there are people in this uh, room and in the real market, locution acts are something like parts of agreement. And <coughs> even companies uh, think about how to use locution acts. Uh, in Poland, we've got example of uh, ING Bank, uh, which has an, a campaign, marketing campaign called Simple, Poprostu, uh, which has to uh, decrease uh, number of paper, uh, paper in agreements uh, to make it more clear for, uh, for uh, the uh, consumers and clients. Uh, also, uh, Austin showed that there are elocution acts. Uh, it is saying uh, with a goal of wishes and orders. And this type of utterances uh, is very important especially in company. Ronald Coase, in his famous essay, uh, Nature of Fear, uh, showed that giving orders is one of the most important part of company. And also, there is perlocution act. It is saying with purpose to influence other people, like persuading, and persuading for some economists like Leda McCloskey and Arjo Klammer is really important. Uh, in the 90s, it was 25% of US GDP. And according to uh, research from uh, 2013, it was even 30%. And now our contemporary writers, like this on the photo, uh, influence other people to buy their products, to buy their service. And this persuasion is really, really matters in the real economics, in the real market. But we're in Vienna during 
Austrian Economics Conference. So what did Austrian economists like Ludwig von Mises and Friedrich August von Hayek thought, uh, think about the language? Both of them <coughs> wrote something about language. So Mises uh, in Human Action showed that language, using language can be form of an uh, action like giving orders, as I said before, but also <coughs> in nation state and economy, he uh, has a chapter about language and for him language is something like nation uh, defining factor. If we uh, use uh, to read, to speak, uh, and to think in one language, we, are, we belong to this nationality. Hayek <coughs> considered language as a form of spontaneous order. Uh, for him, language was created by the people, but people didn't want to create it. And a language like a law or market works uh, like typical spontaneous order. Uh, it has got some abstract rules, uh, but some uh, uh, problems with these abstract rules because they can't be used every time. Also, Hayek showed, like Mises, that uh, language can influence our mind. In uh, con the confusion of, lang uh, of language in political thought, uh, he showed that there are some words that are causing misunderstanding uh, in politics, that we should uh, think more about how we use language in politics. So both, for both of them, language can influence our mind, and because of that, uh, language can be also uh, important in economy. So how and when economists can use reflection, uh, reflections on language? Uh, I can answer with the most popular uh, answer with, for economists, it depends. Uh, when economists want to answer the question how language works, he can use something like a micro scale, uh, that is economic analysis of language, uh, how words are, are created. And in this case, uh, language is a form of market, uh, words can be form of uh, products and so on. But for me, it, it is quite boring because it is an uh, example of uh, economic imperialism. Uh, reflections on language can be used also in macro scale. Uh, for example, in economic history, uh, when we, and economic social, uh, sociology, uh, when we uh, study how different words can um, change during uh, years. And for example, we've got word uh, honest and honesty, uh, which changed, uh, changed uh, their meaning uh, during the uh, bourgeois uh, revolution, according to Deidre McCloskey. And also, these reflections on language can be used in comparative economics uh, when we have two countries with two different uh, languages. And maybe uh, in these forms of uh, language, of important words or how a word uh, can be created, uh, we can find something important about innovations uh, and uh, about mind of these people. Also, language, uh, these reflections on language can be used in analyzing of the role mar of marketing, uh, because this is the form of persuading. And that's all. If you want to contact me, there are my uh, email, LinkedIn, and ResearchGate. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mateusz. Uh, are there any questions?
thank you, Mateusz, for the presentation. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask you for a comment about the negative shift in the language, uh, because Didra, uh, in her uh, magnificent trilogy, pointed to a positive shift in rhetorics that enabled the flourishing of the entrepreneurship, but in recent years, especially in uh, Poland, I believe we, we share this experience, there is a negative shift in rhetorics in uh, regards to both economic theory and the free entrepreneurship. Uh, could, you, uh, come, uh, could you give us some, some remarks about that? Uh, yes, we can, uh, thanks to these reflections, uh, we can find both positive and uh, negative uh, changes in words. Uh, and I think uh, if I'm for using these bad words for entrepreneurs and uh, this kind of people, uh, we can look how uh, people think about uh, economy. So, uh, for example, if we use the term land or landlord, which is uh, often used as negative, uh, we can find that there are many people who perhaps don't know about, uh, about housing market, and uh, for them it is something like negative. So. Any more questions? Uh, then Matej, do you have an uh, example of a constructed language in history which didn't emerge out of spontaneous order, but uh, nevertheless Yes, there was developed successfully. Uh, there was, there were, uh, there was try to uh, create language like Esperanto, but it is not used because uh, language must be spontaneous or dark because people have to create uh, it themselves and use it. But I think that uh, creating language uh, is not possible. Any more questions? Uh, then I have one more, uh, maybe a challenge. Um, so it is often said, to my knowledge, that uh, German, modern German, emerged out of the Martin Luther's translation of the Bible into German, and uh, modern Italian from uh, Dante's uh, work. Um, well, this is not a construction necessarily, right? It's it's a, a, a literature is offered, and then that is taken on and is spread voluntarily. Um, but it still might be quite dependent on one person. And uh, do you think this contradicts with your theory in any way? I think that it's more like an inspiration and some kind of unification because language, if you have a nation, should be quite unified. Uh, should be the same for most of, uh, for the most people in the country. So uh, I think that this kind of inspiration, which are taken uh, by people is typical for spontaneous this type of uh, of act. Any more questions? Yes, please. Yeah, I was wondering uh, about what has an impact on what? Is the language... Them can influence uh, both of them, because uh, there are some, for, for David McCloskey, uh, this example with uh, word honesty and honest uh, caused the bourgeois uh, revolution, uh, because the ideas uh, caused uh, the changes. But I think that uh, some situations in economy can cause change also in uh, language. For example, I think that during uh, economic transition in Poland, uh, many wars were created, and I think both of them influenced. Any more questions? Then I have one more. Um, do you think uh, committees, government committees, such as the French language guardians, um, what kind of role uh, do you think they play, uh, if you had a look at that case? Uh, the role of uh, who? In, in, in uh, making the 
language flourish uh, or spread. I mean, one could argue that French has gradually lost uh, its role in, in the world as language of diplomacy and, and uh, in other areas. But uh, France is uh, quite famous for having such a, a, a committee of, um, I think they're called language guardians. Please correct me. I think that language guardians should be something like language analysis, uh, researchers, and they should think how language works, and uh, they should uh, look what words, uh, how words change mean, uh, meaning, not uh, they should learn a uh, control language because it is impossible for me. Well, do you think uh, the government has some sort of conserving uh, role uh, in, in the language? We can try uh, to conserve some roles, but uh, people will do what they want. And I, this is, I think, uh, language anarchism, but. I think that uh, people will do what they want. And uh, even in Poland, uh, when I was listening to some uh, linguistics, uh, they were saying that, for me, it's quite sad that this rule changed, but this is a uh, fact that uh, people want to speak uh, another way. Uh, and in, in what ways do governments try to control language? Any examples? Uh, so <clears throat> there are some forms in Polish languages. Uh, people want to make easier language to use, and uh, some uh, language conservatists want to use the beautiful Polish uh, language, like in books. Uh, but people want to use their uh, ways. Thanks a lot, Matthias. Thank you very much.